Namaste. Welcome to another episode of India Detailed. Today we are going to talk about Ashok. Ashok or Ashok the Great, a ruler of the Maurya dynasty who ruled the subcontinent from circa 269 to 232 BCE. He earned greatness not only because of the most extensive empire he created but also because of his principles, ideals and administration. More on that in a bit. Ashok was Chandragupta Maurya's grandson, born to Bindusar and Subhadrangi. As a young prince, he was in charge of Ujjain. Bindusar's death in circa 272 BCE led to a war of succession. Now, according to the Mahavamsa, Ashok killed his elder brother Sushima to become the king. According to the Deepavamsa, he massacred 99 of his brothers. The Ashoka Vadana tells us that he seized the throne with the help of Bindusar's chief minister Radha Gupta. Ashok was crowned in circa 269 BCE. Over the next 8 years, he expanded his empire from Assam in the east to Balochistan in the west, from Afghanistan in the north to Mysore in the south. The most important political event which was also recorded in his inscriptions is the War of Kalinga which took place 8 years after his coronation. Kalinga was a powerful state holding a strategic control over the land and sea routes to South India. Ashok fought a lethal war destroying Kalinga. A legend says that seeing the destruction of the Kalinga war, a revolutionary transformation took place in the emperor. From Chand Ashok, an ill-tempered wicked king, he transformed into Dhamma Ashok, a stable, peaceful emperor. To propagate Dhamma, Ashok erected pillars and rock edicts, peaceful behavior, non-violence, compassion, gratitude, respect, charity, etc. defined his dhamma. He tried to have a universal dhamma to make everyone's life happier and peaceful. These edicts were found on trade routes, Buddhist pilgrimage centers, etc. His edicts have also given information about the administration. The inscriptions of Ashok show Akhmanid influences. For instance, in these inscriptions, Ashok is referred to as Devanam Priya Priyadarshi, that is, beloved of gods, King Priyadarshi, Priyadarshi being his name. This is greatly influenced by Darius's Behistun inscription, where Darius thanks Ahur Mazda for his grace. The inscriptions were written in either Brahmi or Kharosthi script in Prakrit Greek or Aramic language. The minor rock edicts found at Muski and Gujjara had Devanam Priya Priyadarshi Ashok inscribed, thus making it clear that Devanam Priya Priyadarshi is none other than Ashok. Later Buddhist texts have called him Ashok itself. Now let us see the famous 14 major rock edicts in a nutshell. Edict number 1 reveals Ashoka's orders which prohibited animal slaughter and festive gatherings. Rock Edict number 2 Ashok worked towards the welfare and happiness of the entire living world. He undertook various activities like planting of trees on trade routes, digging wells, building rest houses, medical centers for men and animals, cultivation of medicinal herbs, etc. Not only in his own kingdom, but also his neighbors, Chola, Pandya, Satyaputra, Ketalaputra, Tambapani, and Yonaraja. Rock Edict number 3 12 years after his coronation, he passed on the orders to the Yuta, Pradeshiks and Rajukas in his kingdom to spread the Dhamma every 5 years. These were probably regional officers in his reign. Rock Edict number 4 The teachings of Dhamma are essential to mankind to stop the violence and disrespect for every living thing. Rock Edict number 5 talks about the importance to do good deeds and how easy it is to do something bad but difficult to do something good. From this edict, we know that 13 years after his coronation, Ashok appointed new officers in his kingdom, the Dhamma Mahamatras. The edict also gives names of some regions of that time, Kamboj, Gandhar, Rashtrik, Patanik, Yavana, Aparanta, 
where the officers were stationed. Rock Edict No. 6 talks about the strong, elaborate and effective network of his spies who could meet him at any place and at any time. Rock Edict No. 7 requests tolerance for all religions. Rock Edict No. 8 Ten years after his coronation, Ashok travelled from place to place to spread his principles, visiting holy places and performing charity. This Rock Edict describes Ashok's first Dhamma Yatra to Bodh Gaya. Rock Edict No. 9 disapproves popular ceremonies and Rock Edict No. 10 condemns the desire for fame and glory and stresses upon following the Dhamma. Rock Edict No. 12 directed and determined the request for tolerance among different religious sects. To promote one's own sect, devaluing others is harmful and unappreciated. This edict gives us some more names of the post office officers he newly appointed, like Sri Adhyaksha Mahamatra. Rock Edict No. 13 It is the largest inscription. The War of Kalinga and its aftermath are described in this. It also describes the spread of Dhamma in kingdoms beyond Antiochus, also in Cambodge, Andhra, Pulinda, and Ceylon. Rock Edict No. 14 says that the messages or the orders were repeated so that the people wouldn't forget Dhamma. Architecture during Ashoka's time Caves for Ajayvikas were excavated at Barabar. These caves were built by Ashok's grandson, Dasharath. According to a Buddhist legend, Ashok brought back the relics of Gautam Buddha which were shared among eight countries and built 84,000 stupas. Yuan Shuang had also mentioned that at Saunkissa, Ashok had built huge stairways that touched the skies in the memory of Gautam Buddha's return from heaven. Ashok tried to create a welfare state. It is said that through the Buddhist monk Upagupta, he learned about Buddhism and the third Buddhist council was convened during his reign at Patliputra. Many Buddhist monks went far across the borders of the Mauryan Empire to spread the teachings of Dhamma. His son Mahinda and daughter Sanghamitra travelled to Ceylon to share and promote the Dhamma. Ashok passed away in circa 232 BCE in Takshashila. His empire lasted just 50 more years. So this was about one of the most exemplary rulers who ever lived. Hope you liked this episode. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel. And remember, history is always in the making.